So you think if someone throws a basketball at your face, hey, and you have time to block it, that you have good reflexes. Wrong. You have good reaction time. See, there's a difference between reflexes and reaction time. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to improve your reaction time. So whether you just wanna be a better person, wanna be a better athlete, or you wanna feel a bit smarter, reaction time is something you need to be paying attention to. So we're gonna dive deeply into what a reflex is, what reaction time is, and then I'm gonna explain what you can do from a physical standpoint, a nutrition standpoint, and even a supplemental standpoint to improve those reaction times quite dramatically. Hey, you're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. And today, we're doing a little bit of neuroscience here. Make sure you keep it locked in every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and heck, every other day as well. There's a little red button. I want you to go ahead and hit that sucker so you can subscribe to this channel, and then I want you to hit that little bell icon, that goofy looking thing that barely looks like a bell, and that's gonna allow you to turn on notifications so that you know whenever I post a new video or whenever I'm doing a live broadcast. All right, without further ado, it's neuroscience time. So a reflex is like when you go to the doctor and they hit your elbow or they hit your knee with that little thingy, right? You bounce your leg, you bounce your elbow, whatever. Okay, what a reflex is, is something to bring you back to homeostasis. That's all it is. So I want you to think of it like this. You have a whole little ecosystem of neurons and effectors that are in a given area. If someone hits me right here, my neuron's gonna receive that impact and it's going to have an impulse reaction or reflex to what is called an effector to cause that to go right back to normal. So it's trying to find homeostasis and it's all fairly localized. Reaction time, on the contrary, is where I receive a cue, a signal of some kind, visual, audible, whatever, like a ball coming out my face, okay, that's going to be my cue. That signal has to go to my brain and then my brain has to process it and then neurons have to be triggered and neurotransmitter effect has to happen, action potential has, basically a whole signal has to go down my nerve to my hand to block my face. So there's a number of things that go on. So you can see how improving reaction time is all about improving the transit time. Okay, we're trying to improve the speed of neural transmission. Reflex is, is localized, that has other things. Okay, we're talking about reaction time. So let's talk about how this actually works. In our nerves, we have what are called axons. Okay, axons is like the, they're like the highway. That's where the signal or the action potential travels. And there's really only a couple ways that we can improve our reaction time. We either have to improve the ability of a signal to go through that axon, or we have to improve what's called the myelin, which I'll talk about in a second. So the axon being the superhighway down a nerve, what ends up happening is a signal travels through that. The wider, the bigger an axon, the faster a signal can travel. Remember, within that axon, we still have proteins, we still have cytoplasmic material, cytoplasmic vessels, we have all these things inside a nerve. So if a nerve is small, like pain nerves, for example, or, or nerves that are gonna transmit pain signals, they're small, so the signal doesn't go very fast. But certain nerves have larger axons, which allow a signal to go faster. There's not a whole lot we can do to improve the size of an axon or to improve the flow of an action potential, right? But we can improve what's called the myelin. The myelin is the outer layer of a nerve. And prior to this video, a lot of us just think that the myelin protects the nerve, which doesn't really tell us much. We're just left in limbo. Okay, it protects the nerve. Like, what does that really mean? Well, it protects the action potential, to be completely honest. So if I see that ball coming at my face and my brain recognizes it, it's going to trigger an action potential to flow down my nerve to block my face. Well, that action potential is gonna trigger an influx of positively charged ions triggered by sodium. And these positively charged ions are gonna flow down the axon and they're gonna trigger an initial gradient, but they're also gonna trigger additional sodium channels to open and additional channels within that axon to open so that the signal goes faster. Here's where it gets interesting. We have negatively charged ions that are always trying to counteract positively charged ions. So we have a positive electrical flow going down a nerve and we have a negative electrical world outside of that nerve. The myelin sheath protects the positively charged ions from the negatively charged ions. If our myelin sheath is thick like it should be, the positively charged ions flow and barely get affected by the negatively charged ions. If our myelin sheath is thin, then the negatively charged ions have the ability to sort of dissipate the effect of the positively charged ions. This is exaggerated the way I'm describing it. 
but every little bit of resistance that occurs from negatively charged ions upon those positively charged ions makes it so that our reaction time is slowed down by nanosecond upon nanosecond. So the difference between a winning block in a karate match and getting kicked in the face can be just a matter of a couple negative ions, right? So we have to be paying attention to that. So that's where we get into some of the solutions. So the first thing I want to talk about is improving your white matter by doing bouts of endurance exercise. Don't be afraid of the endurance exercise. Take a look at boxers. Some of these guys have amazing, amazing muscular physiques and they do tons and tons and tons of endurance work and they have some of the best reaction times of probably any athletes that are out there. Okay, endurance work improves the blood flow to the white matter of the brain. The white matter is just a labyrinth of a bunch of electrical systems. It is white because of the myelin. There are so much wiring, so much nerve go action going on there. We have a lot of myelin there. Okay, think of it like opening up your computer and you see the CPU, you see the motherboard, you see the graphics card, you see all the semiconductors, everything you need, and then you have a bunch of wires still. The wires are the white matter. It's the important stuff that's transmitting information and without it, the computer would die. But we still need the gray matter, the CPU, all the important stuff there. They work together. But we need more blood flow and energy to the wires so the wires can actually do their job. Okay, the power supply. By doing a lot of exercise and by doing longer bouts of endurance work, we improve blood flow to the white matter and we improve vasodilation through beta-2 adrenergic receptors. So basically, by triggering epinephrine, we get more blood flow to the brain, which therefore makes the white matter more effective and it can trigger signals from the gray matter to actually cause a better action potential that has more survival to our end result. So 30, 40 minutes of extended cardio a couple times per week can have a very powerful, very profound effect on your ability to block a kick or block a punch. I mean, it's just the way it is. Next up, nutritionally, you can consume something known as lion's mane. I talk about this in a lot of my videos, and lion's mane is pretty unique stuff in the fact that it's a mushroom. Okay? And the way that this works is it promotes what is called nerve growth factor. So there's very specific things that are in lion's mane that have been shown to not only promote actual growth of nerves and neurons, but also helps support the myelin. So we get a double whammy, okay? We get thicker myelin because we have the nerve growth factor, the genetic code that allows the nerves to get stronger and grow. But then we also get a stronger signal because the nerve growth factor is there to support the neurons too. So this is probably the most direct way that you can improve your reaction time without having to train extensively. Now there's an option down below if you wanna check it out to get some of Four Sigmatic's Lion's Mane Coffee. Okay, they're obviously world renowned for this. Tim Ferriss has been talking about them for so many years. I've been talking about them for years. Honestly, it's probably the most cost effective and fun way to get lion's mane in so you're not just having to take it straight. You just mix it up in the coffee form that it comes with and you're good to go. So you can improve your reaction time, get that added benefit that I'm talking about. Plus, I don't know, it just makes you feel good cognitively. I like doing it. I like doing it before I film and all that stuff. So anyway, special discount that no one else can get down below in the description. Okay, the next thing that you can do is you can meditate. Now you're probably thinking, Thomas, I don't want to meditate, that's weird. And I understand, because I was skeptical at first too. But when it comes to meditation, there's a lot of science that backs it up. There's a study that was published in the journal Psychiatry Research Neuroimaging. Okay, this took a look at test subjects that were practicing meditation for eight weeks, approximately 27 minutes every day for eight weeks. Okay, they found that when they meditated, they had a huge increase in the density of their gray matter. So that means it was like putting a more powerful graphics card, more powerful CPU, more powerful processor in your computer. Whereas you didn't need to change the white matter, you just got a better signal to travel through the white matter. So you're getting down to the core of it. Okay, meditation's like, it's the wild west. We don't know a whole lot about it. All we know is it has a powerful effect. I don't meditate 27 minutes per day, but I do meditate five to 15 minutes per day, and I think it's changed my life quite dramatically. So that's something you definitely wanna throw into the mix. Then lastly is another nutritional slash supplemental thing you can do. Take a couple grams of tyrosine. It's a super cheap amino acid. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it anywhere, and it's the precursor to dopamine. So what that means is when you take a couple grams of tyrosine, you essentially feed your body more dopamine, whereas your body could run out of dopamine. So if you run out of dopamine, you are losing essentially an action potential. Dopamine is the reward system. And if you run out of dopamine, you don't get that reward system and you become depressed. I say that with air quotes because you don't literally become depressed, you become chemically depressed because you don't have dopamine because you're not reaching the end result. You need dopamine. So tyrosine is gonna feed your body and be a precursor to dopamine. 
There was a study that was actually published in the journal Neuropsychologia that took a look at test subjects, broke them into a couple of different groups, had them fast overnight, and then consumed 400 milliliters of orange juice, why orange juice, I don't know, with two grams of tyrosine dissolved in it, or two grams of placebo dissolved in it. Well, then after they consumed that beverage, they had them do 30 minutes of a cognitive test to test their reaction time. Well, they found that those that consumed the tyrosine ended up having over a 6% improvement, 6.2% improvement in their reaction time. Okay, then they flip-flopped it. They had the group that didn't take the tyrosine before take the tyrosine a couple, like a week later, and they found, again, same improvement in reaction time. So dopamine is important. Therefore, tyrosine feeds dopamine. Therefore, tyrosine is important. We need it. So here you have it. You have four simple things you can do. You can exercise, you can take lion's mane, you can take tyrosine, and you can get on your meditation game. Stop being a big baby about it and realize that it's not just for hippies. You can spend five minutes and meditate and it will make a big difference. There you have it. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. I know this was a deep one, but it's how I roll. See you soon.